Our solar system is a savage place. From the ice volcanoes of Saturn's moon, Enceladus, to the vast lava fields of Jupiter's Io, to our own world, the Earth. Volcanoes destroy, but they also create. It is literally true that if there weren't volcanoes here, we would not be here either. Volcanoes shape and change our climate. Volcanoes are the giver of life and also the takers of life. Today's space probes and telescopes reveal volcanoes on worlds we once thought dead. Finding volcanoes on an object that's smaller than our own moon was a huge shock. If volcanoes exist on other worlds, could we find life there too? Planet Earth, a jewel in the darkness of space. Our home is timeless, beautiful, and incredibly violent. Volcanoes are one of the most powerful natural phenomena on the planet. They create new land, destroy the old. They blast out gases that transform the air we breathe. Deep in our oceans, volcanic heat fuels strange new life. Volcanoes help power the living Earth. Now, we search for signs of life on alien worlds. We know life needs water. We know it needs energy. And that's where volcanoes come in. They pump out vast amounts of energy. Find volcanoes on other worlds, and we might find life. The search starts here, the planet orbiting closest to Earth Venus, a world that appears very much like ours. Venus and Earth are roughly the same mass. They're roughly the same distance away from the sun. So they're kind of like twins. Three billion years ago, Earth and Venus were very similar. New land, new oceans, an atmosphere. Both planets were perfect for life. But on Venus, something went wrong. Something made Venus diverge radically from the history of the Earth. Uh, Venus took a definite turn to the dark side a long time ago. Venus is a hellhole, our evil twin. Today, Venus's surface is like a furnace. It's 900 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface, and it's hot enough to melt, actually, some metals. So you wouldn't stand a chance. Venus is a greenhouse world. Its atmosphere is thick with carbon dioxide. It traps heat from the sun like a blanket. These actual images of Venus's surface reveal a barren, superheated wasteland. Venus's thick blanket of CO2 killed the planet. The CO2 came from volcanoes. Orbiting space probes gave the first clues. Radar punched through Venus's thick clouds and revealed volcanic formations across the planet.
like formations we also see right here on Earth. The shield volcanoes of Hawaii. Shield volcanoes get their name from their round, flat shape. These volcanoes ooze, but they ooze for thousands of years. Once we were able to map the entire surface of Venus using cloud-penetrating radar, we started to study the landforms there, and we saw a lot that was actually very familiar. In particular, we saw giant shield volcanoes that are very similar to the shield volcanoes here in Hawaii. The radar images of Venus were dead ringers for the shield volcanoes on Hawaii. Sometime in the past, Venus had volcanoes. For the first time, we had a picture of Venus revealed. And boy, were we shocked. We found a scarred surface, a volcanic surface. There are at least a 1,000 volcanoes that are very large, and maybe tens or even hundreds of thousands of smaller ones. Three quarters of Venus's surface is lava plains, evidence of an ancient cataclysm. This could have been a home for life. Instead, it was engulfed by fire. Volcanoes belched trillions of tons of carbon dioxide into Venus's atmosphere. Temperatures soared. The seas boiled dry. A runaway greenhouse process began. On Earth, carbon dioxide is able to absorb into the rocks, it's able to absorb into the ocean. But on Venus, you have no water, and it's now so hot that carbon dioxide can't even combine with the rocks. So as carbon dioxide was released into the atmosphere by volcanoes a long time ago, over time, there was less and less of a method to take it back out of the atmosphere. If Venus ever had life, volcanoes sterilized the entire world. Earth remains the only living world we know of. That may change. This is the gas giant Jupiter, its moons frozen and dead. Or so we thought. Look closer and a mystery emerges. A cloud hanging over a cold, lifeless world. On Venus, volcanoes turned an Earth-like world into a superheated hell. Finding volcanoes on an Earth-like world was no surprise. But spotting volcanoes on a moon? That was a shock. In March 1979, the Voyager 1 space probe gave us our first close-up view of Jupiter's tiny moon, Io. A world we once thought cold and dead. And they saw something really weird. They saw this arc next to the moon. It, and it looked almost as if like there was another moon behind it. And we scratched our heads and said, well, what could that be? Everybody knows that Io is dead, boring, uninteresting. And then people realize, oh my god, it's a volcanic eruption. We found that it's covered with volcanoes. It is tremendously geologically active. There are volcanoes erupting all the time. And what they're erupting is a lot of sulfur, and it gets, it gets very hot. And sulfur, when it changes temperature, changes color. It can be red or orange or yellow or black. And so these pictures of the face of Io make it look like a pizza covered with different kinds of cheese and olives where the little black spots are. Io is not dead. It's alive and kicking. It has over 400 active volcanoes. The largest, Pele, 
erupts from a gigantic lava lake. It reaches nearly 250 miles into space. If we could stand on the edge of that lava lake and watch that plume shooting off into the blackness of space, that would be an incredible sight. Pele's eruptions are so huge because Io is so small. There's nothing to hold the lava back, virtually no atmosphere and very little gravity. These vast eruptions make Earth volcanoes look like firecrackers. How can such a tiny moon be so volcanic? The answer is Jupiter. Just as the moon raises tides in Earth's oceans, Jupiter raises tides on Io, tides of solid rock. Io's orbit around Jupiter is not a circle. Sometimes it's closer, sometimes farther away. Jupiter gives Io a gravitational pounding. And so Jupiter's gravity pulls on it a little bit harder and a little bit weaker. And what happens is the moon stretches like this. It's called a tidal force, and it doesn't stretch this much. It's only a little bit. But in fact, it's enough to heat it up. It's, it's just friction. It's the same way when you rub your hands together really fast, they begin to feel warm. Friction creates heat. Jupiter's gravity stretches and squeezes Io. In every two-day orbit, the ground rises and falls by nearly 300 feet. This pummeling generates intense heat and gigantic pressure. Wherever there's a weak part in the crust, the lava rushes out. So the volcanism is on a planetary scale. Unlike here on Earth, where there are certain bits that are active around the plates or in weak spots, this is an entire moon that's one active hotspot. Thanks to the incredible power of gravity, Io is the most volcanically active world in the solar system. The volcanism on Io taught us something new. It taught us that internal sources of energy can drive volcanism in a way that's different from that on Earth. In outer space, tidal forces, the differential squeezing of the moons of a gas giant, can also create volcanic activity. That was a game changer. Io is a lava world, superheated and violent. It's hard to imagine anything surviving there. Yet, the volcanic principle here is the same as on Earth. Pressurized, superheated magma below the surface blasts through fissures in the crust. But not all volcanoes need magma. They don't even need to be hot. Travel out past Jupiter and into the outer solar system, and it gets cold, really cold. The distant moon, Triton, is so cold that much of its tenuous atmosphere can freeze solid. And yet, there are volcanoes here. Volcanoes that may hold the secret of alien life.